You're watching Dr. Pepper Road to the Championship. Welcome to the Swamp. Today, another non-conference tune-up for a rivalry game next week, then an SEC championship game for number eight Florida as they play host to Florida Atlantic. You're watching SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Florida didn't just win the East, they ran away with the thing. Seven and one in conference play. They wrapped it up weeks ago, now looking for their 10th win of the season. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Heisman winner Andre Ware. It's been a truly remarkable season here in Gainesville. The job Jim McElwain has done, perhaps your national coach of the year. Yeah, I, I think so. When you look at it, he came in here, same players, sprinkle in a couple of true freshmen, but he allowed players to be at their best. Kelvin Taylor was an east-west runner in previous years. Now, downhill and attacking. Jonathan Bullard was a, a two-gap player. Hold and read and react. Now he's attacking. He's up the field. Jim McElwain had a simple message coming in here. It was, what are we going to do better today that's going to help us on Saturday? Well, Tom, they've been pretty good each and every Saturday. He's looking to become the first Florida head coach in history to start his Florida career with a 10-win season. Urban Meyer didn't do it. Steve Spurrier didn't do it. Ray Graves didn't do it. And he's already got the Gators in their 11th SEC championship game. A remarkable season, to be sure. And now their challenge from Conference USA today, the Owls of Florida Atlantic, who have never beaten a top 25 team in their young history. Brandon Powell back to return the opening kick. Powell will take a knee. It has been a less than perfect season, though, for Florida. Long and winding road highlighted by the suspension of their starting quarterback, Will Greer, for performance-enhancing drugs. And for more on that and an update there, let's go down to the field and Laura Rutledge. Tom, Greer's suspension appeal was denied by the NCAA. He was trying to get the 12-month suspension reduced to the remainder of the 2015 season, but the NCAA ruled against the appeal. So that means he won't be able to return until the seventh game of the 2016 season, which is an October 15th matchup against Missouri. Coach McElwain and his staff have said they stand by and support Greer and his family, and they'll continue to do so. It must be a tough time for Greer, especially to watch the success his program has had. Treon Harris is starting quarterback was in a quarterback competition with Will throughout the spring and fall camp and here's a look at the starters for Florida in this offense yeah Kelvin Taylor a totally different player this year running more north south a powerful downhill runner he'll have an effect on this game with that first carry and then Antonio Callaway you talked about him earlier a home run hit waiting to happen just a true freshman on the outside edges of Florida's offense well the freshmen have been impact players for Florida this season they set up the screen here's Taylor and he's up the numbers for a first down couple of touches that one goes for 12 yards here are the starters for FAU and yeah, Trayvon Coley maybe one of the best players that you won't hear about inside for Florida Atlantic a good inside pass rusher excellent against the run and Ode Ozdemir Nate Ozdemir, their middle linebacker, kind of the glue of their defense, a big-time playmaker inside. Jordan Scarlett has entered the game at tailback. Now out of the pistol for Treon Harris. And play action, he wants to throw it again. A little duck finds his tight end. They've been so good for Florida this year. The Virginia transfer, Jake McGee. Florida leads the country with three tight ends with more than 75 receiving yards and a touchdown. Yeah, when you run as well as Florida has with Kelvin Taylor, and that'll open up some things in play action, and they frighten you when they get Treon Harris on the outside. And Jake McGee, a nice little check down for Treon Harris right away to build his confidence early in this game. McGee, one of the leaders of this Florida team, got a sixth year after a leg injury first game last year. Jordan Scarlett, the freshman out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, picks up a pair. So Harris, a sophomore out of Booker T. Washington in Miami, 8-3 and three as a starter, led Booker T. to a pair of 4A state championships in high school, and that's the first thing his coaches talked about. This kid is a winner. Yeah, he just loves to play the game, and he wins, just happens to win a lot as well. As you mentioned, 8-3 and three here in Florida. This has continued to improve, and where's he improved the most? It's been in his preparation in terms of asking the right questions so that he's ready during the week when Saturday rolls around. 
Pressure coming. He's trying to step up and gets dropped. First sack for FAU over the last three games. Brandon Bryant brought the pressure. And Bryant's a good inside player as well. Better known for stopping the run than he is an uh, inside pass rusher. But here, the arm over, the swim. He beats Martez Ivy, one of those true freshmen that you talk about, maybe extended a little too soon. And the senior at Omaha, Nebraska, able to beat him and get to the quarterback. And that's the weak link for this Florida team, the offensive line. Now 29 sacks allowed, only 19 FBS teams have allowed more. It leaves a third and 14. Jordan Cronkright on the field for the first time at running back. He releases. Harris has some time, and now he's flushed. And they get to him. It was Trey Hendrickson who forced him out of bounds, and that will bring on the kicking team. It's a loss of nine. Well, it's been noted that Florida, in the passing game the last couple of weeks, they struggled a little bit, and Ivy may have gotten away with another hole or a, a hole against Brandon Bryant. And all of a sudden, here comes the best pass rusher of the group at Trey Hendrickson to force Treon Harris out of bounds. And Florida Atlantic, Tom, they passed the first test in this first series against the Gators. Jensen Stoshak back to see this punt from Johnny Townsend. Beautiful kick and a fair catch taken inside the 10. It's a 49 yarder from Townsend. And now we get a chance to see the strength of this Florida team. Their defense has been remarkable this season. Top five in defensive efficiency. You see points allowed fourth in the country. 280 yards allowed fifth in FBS and even better seemingly in the red zone. There's just no holes on this Florida D. <laughs> yeah if you just happen to drive the field and get it inside the 20 yard line. Oh yeah we're going to shut you down less than half the times. That you get down there, you're gonna you're gonna put it in the end zone against them. It is a defense that flies around, they attack, and they make plays. Jacquez Johnson, the starting quarterback for Florida Atlantic, and his first snap is a carry that will net maybe a yard and a half. Here's how they line up defensively. We've got a new starter in there, Kerry Clark at defensive tackle, and they're without a couple key guys up front today. Yeah, Jonathan Bullard, I think he's playing his best football in his senior year. Could have gone to the NFL last year, came back and made himself a better player. And then Jared Davis in the middle is the glue of this Florida, Florida defense. The, the play caller, the coaches say, hey, we wouldn't play nearly as well as we play without him in the middle of their defense. On second and eight, Johnson fires one complete nice hands on the grab by Jensen Stoshak in a first down after a gain of nine and yeah, Stoshak is the guy that uh, we're going to talk a lot about former walk on who is just their best playmaker on the outside can get deep they're going quick now this is Henry Bussey gain of nine and then I think Markinson Marseille the left guard if they're going to run the football He's a guy that they're going to go behind. Short yardage situations. Watch him go behind number 73. Johnson swings it out again, but we got a whistle and a stoppage of play. Well, start. Start, start. Number nine in the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. That was Howell, the running back. Jacquez Johnson is the heart and soul of this FAU team. He doesn't necessarily look like a quarterback physically. 6'1, 240. And you might be thrown off by the number 32. Well, he wears that in memory of his high school teammate, Devin Mitchell, who was murdered three years ago before he could play his senior year of high school in Starkville, Mississippi. It's a great honor to his former teammate. It also lends a little visual punch to that big fella back there wearing a fullback's number, slinging passes around. Yep, and I tell you what, he can't sling it. I mean, a couple of passes to Stosak, who gets inside position, but watch how quickly he deals. Eyes go right, shows you the leadership and, and how long he's played under center at Florida Atlantic, holds just about every record there at quarterback. But, boy, he can show you something and then go the other way, and Florida does not need this with big Jonathan Bullard down early in the ball game. They're missing a ton up front today. Alex McAllister with nine and a half sacks. Jordan Sherritt, Joey Ivey all sitting out today. Caleb Brantley, we just learned before the game, battling abdominal and groin injuries, not likely to play today. And now Bullard making his 32nd career start today. And it's the right guard, Jacoby Smith, that goes a little bit low, you know, trying pat quick pass pro. 
And uh, right around the knee area of Jacoby Smith will step up. Jim McElwain over the years got his start in Eastern Washington back in 1987 coaching the quarterbacks and receivers. Michigan State with Nick Saban and the Oakland Raiders for a year. Aaron Brooks was his quarterback with the Raiders. A couple of national championships as a coordinator for Nick Saban at Alabama. Then his first head job at Colorado State for three years. Did a remarkable job in Fort Collins. And now his first season here in the Swamp. And they're headed to the SEC title game. Almost it really prepared him to, you know, for this the task here at Florida. And I tell you what, he has gotten himself off to an excellent start in his first year for the Gators. Fresh set of downs for FAU, but great balance by Marcus Clark just to get back to the line of scrimmage as they try to set up the screen. That previous play, Jonathan Bullard went down with a knee injury. Here's another look. Yeah, just the quick pass rush. It's a quick three-step drop, so linemen are taught to get the defensive line's hands down. By doing that, you go low, and Jacoby Smith goes low on, on Bullard, who's having an outstanding year. I mean, worked all offseason with Mike Kent, the strength and conditioning coach, Better his quickness, better his strength, and was playing outstanding to this point. Back to the slant, but a flag, and the pass was incomplete. Trying to work it in. Bullard, the Narek Award semifinalist. Personal foul. Legal chop block. Number 76 and number 63 of the offense. Penalties have to distance the goal line. Second down. John McDade, our white hat, they're keeping an eye on that offensive line after the Bullard injury. Yeah, it's Farfit, the right tackle, and Smith, the right guard. They set you up to go low, and he's going the same block that he threw on Bullard. He just threw on Clark. Chop lucky. One guy had to have been engaged, and then the other goes low. Second and 25. Movement on the left side. Number 58 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Reggie Bain, the sophomore from Miami Central. FAU has started the same five on the old line the last three quarters of the season. They had to move some guys around early, as just about everybody has. Bullard still has his helmet on and knee got hyperextended on the. That's exactly what it looked like is that the knee kind of hyperextended itself and hopefully he's going to be OK and we'll get a chance to see him back in this game at some point. Second and 30. A little bit of room for Clark. Able to pick up five and that will still leave third and long. Right, trying to take advantage of an aggressive defense a little underneath handoff. To Marcus Clark and pick up something to get it back to a manageable situation here. But I think the best thing for Florida Atlantic to try to go down the field and pick up all of this. It's a catch and run, or you punt it on fourth down and play defense. Another flag. Ball start. Number 58 of the offense. It's Reggie Bain again. Fourth penalty. And the he, third false start. He has Brian Cox on his side. He's trying to anticipate the snap count and maybe get a little bit of a head start. Trying to, you know, get get himself kicked out into that stance as a lot of tackles will. And Bullard making his way to the locker room maybe for some further evaluation. Third down forever. And they're able to bring down Marcus Clark after a gain of seven. I think it's a smart call by Brian Wright. Not trying to do too much. Get too cute where you throw an interception and it's a short field for the Gators. You had an outstanding first defensive look at things on that first possession. So punt it and play defense. Dalton Schomp to punt it away. Coaches raved about his leg this week. Averaging about 47 and a half yards of punt this year. Pretty good one. Antonio Callaway from the 34 gets taken down by the second man through. 
Seven forty seven remaining. That was a forty five yarder off the foot of Shunk and two yards on the return. How about this view from Gainesville. We're back to the swamp in a moment. Anyway, through the first quarter, no score between Florida Atlantic and Florida. Today's annual saluting those who serve game here in Gainesville, which honors military and first responders. And before today's game, Sergeant Corey Garman was recognized as the honoree Mr. Tubits. In 2012, Garman, a double amputee, lost his legs when he stepped on a mine in Afghanistan. Through his rehab, he was introduced to the Florida coaching staff and has maintained a relationship with them ever since. So today, Sergeant Garman was the honorary Mr. Tubits as he performed the George Edmondson routine. And a great reception for Sergeant Garman today. Nothing doing with the running game for Jordan Conkright. Conkright, the freshman from Miami out of Westminster. And, you know, you look forward, you pay it forward with this Florida team, Andre, not just today, but they got Florida State next week. They've got likely having Alabama in the SEC championship game. And then what may be next for them, the running game has to find some yardage. Yeah, and I think it's consistency along the offensive line. We've had some mixing and matches, the same five the last couple of weeks, though, but you've got to be consistent up front for running backs to know exactly where to expect holes to open up. I think that's what's been the frustrating part about the running game the last few weeks. 102nd in the country. Harris steps up, finds McGee for the second time, and that's the first down through the air, a gain of 13. The shuffle along the offensive line over this year and years past, including Mason Halter at right tackle, who's an FCS All-America at Fordham. And Martez Ivy, the true freshman, it's going to be a good one. Highly recruited, powerful, fast player, but still young. Kelvin Taylor at tailback. And a first down. He found some room on the right side and rips off an eight yard run for the junior from Bell Glade. A couple of nice blocks inside Cameron Dillard. The center as well as Ivy. Watch the left portion of the offensive line. Passes him off to Ivy who kicks down on Brandon Bryant. That opened a nice seam up for Kelvin Taylor. And I don't know of a back that's you know that hits it any faster or harder than Kelvin Taylor boy has he really transformed himself in just under a year. Now second and three. Straight ahead to Taylor he's got a touchdown in five straight games no one's done that in a Gator uniform since Tim Tebow that's a gain of six. And I think what you're talking about when you speak of individual player improvement from year to year yeah. goes back to what Jim McElwain has told his guys. He said it's really simple. Film says it all. And if you want to play on the next level, the film doesn't lie. Yeah. And when you come to a program like Florida, Alabama, LSU, you're wanting to play on the next level, but you have to put it on film each and every day. And scouts don't just watch game film, they watch practice habits as well. Harris over the middle deep ball incomplete trying to find Demarcus Robinson it was just off of his fingertips and I tell you what Harris got some pretty good pressure inside and was able to stand in there and still throw a dime to Demarcus Robinson who tried to track this baby but their best cover man Craven LeBlanc able to just get a hand in there and disrupt things where Mar Demarcus Robinson doesn't come up with it and it's Trayvon Coley the best inside pass rusher able to get the pressure on Harris Coley's a captain he started every game since he set foot on campus McGee motions and on second and ten they give it to Taylor nothing doing there in fact he loses a yard how about the speed inside Robinson Eugene there coming in from the left defensive end spot Coley we've talked about Bryant's made some plays and Hendrickson the right defensive end is given pursuit as well the defensive line really for Florida Atlantic has been the story early in this ball game guys that have stopped the run and harassed Treon Harris 25 sacks now in the season for FAU including a pair on Florida's first series. 
third and 11 and the big pass rushers back in the game including Hendrickson. They go to the slant. Antonio Callaway tried to hang a U-turn. He ends up losing a yard. Yeah, he hung the U-turn because Big Robinson Eugene was sitting in inside about to go out. Watch 59 redirect Callaway. He sees it, senses it, comes out there, and that forces him to go back the other way. Actually, it's Trey Hendrickson, the defensive end of that side, and really nothing there. Two drives for Florida. And so Townsend back on to punt it away for the second time. Stoshak took a fair catch inside the 10 last time. Let's this one bounce and he can't win for losing. Another one down inside the 10. It's actually right at the 10. 31 yarder. Jim McElwain is the new head coach of the Gators. Callaway down the sideline. He's going to score. The kick is up. It's going to be off the right. It is going to be no good. Down the sideline. Brandon Powell. news out of Gainesville Florida quarterback Will Greer has been suspended really sorry to to everyone it's a fake and now he hits to the end zone touchdown loss number one for Jim McElwain the snap's a good one the set down the kick is up on the way it is good for Gator Nation you can put it on the calendar a trip to Atlanta on December 5th Florida is nine and one this season under Jim McElwain notable first seasons none of those guys who are all great coaches ever won ten games in their first season McElwain started the year by saying we'll have 15 opportunities this year gentlemen that of course would mean playing all the way through the national championship Driscoll now in a quarterback and he hits his first target Jason Driscoll brother of former Florida quarterback Jeff Driscoll will get a planned series at least in both the first and second halves. Yeah very even keel guy that just kind of manages the game quietly goes about his business. Marcus Clark straight up the gut for seven. Driscoll is a red shirt freshman. He's gotten just one series each of the last three games forced to make a couple of starts this season or Jacquez Johnson was injured. Say that he really prepares himself to play, studies the game during the week, and has improved with each and every uh, opportunity that he's been on the field during games. So let's see what he brings the offense. Well, they're moving forward, and now they're going deep on target, but came out at the end incomplete. Let's go down and check in with Laura. Jonathan Bullard came out of the locker room walking without a limp. They're still working on that right knee. They had him jogging up and down the sideline. They had him get in a stance. They saw how he was able to push off. Now they're putting a protective sleeve on the right knee. I'll keep you guys updated on whether or not he's going to return. All right. Thank you, Laura. As I mentioned already, without some guys up front, including Alex McAllister and Jordan Sherritt and Joey Ivey. Clark straight ahead and he's able to rip off a four yard run Marcus Clark is one of four running backs that Florida Atlantic will use couple of guys got injured in recent weeks Trey Rodriguez had a shoulder injury first quarter last week didn't return Jay Warren had a hip injury he left the game early they said midweek that Warren would be likely to come back Rodriguez still a question mark now Greg Howell sophomore from Coconut Grove Florida is in the game at running back. Yeah, they've got all the confidence in Howell. It says he's kind of a do it all runner. Excellent at protecting the quarterback. Great movement up front for Florida. Driscoll is flushed and on the run, fires just behind Tyler Cameron. It was there. They went through his tight end's hands. Well, a couple of excellent opportunities for Florida Atlantic. A deep ball that should have been caught. Driscoll showing you some movement in the pocket. And in here, right here, he's got a receiver. Tyler Cameron wide open. You got to catch that ball. You're going to move the chains and be in this game. Those plays have to be made. Florida Atlantic not afraid to take chances. They load up on the trick plays. Maybe too deep in their territory to try one here on fourth and six. And they fake it. Punter takes off straight ahead and slides for the first down. Dalton Shop and the coaching staff said, forget about field position. We got to stay in this game. The Florida coaches looked at tape this week and they saw 71 trick plays. Yep, we talked to Jeff Collins about it. 
said they were ready for just about everything. 71, as you mentioned, not 70, 75, <laughs> but 71 clips of trick plays. And right away, Florida Atlantic able to come out in the first quarter with a fake punt and convert it for a first down. So here we go. The Owls keep the drive alive. Driscoll hands it off to Bussey. And he gets corralled and bear hugged by Jared Davis. It's no too game. fast. This defense too fast to try to get to the edges. I think they've had a great deal of success going between the tackles, especially when you don't have Bullard or Brantley in there. Got a couple of young players subbing in at defensive tackle. Stay between the tackles a little bit. Stay committed to it. But the quick passing game as well has kept Florida a little bit off balance. Jay Warren has entered the game a running back next to Jason Driscoll. Tips and caught well behind the line of scrimmage, but nowhere to go with it for Jensen Stoshek. <laughs> May have been better off just knocking it down. It's a loss of six. Uh, there's no doubt he should have just knocked the play down. You run the risk of something happening when you try to reel this thing in. Nice play off the edge. It's Antonio Riles, I believe. Yep. Riles gets a hand on it, and well, that could have been extremely dangerous for Florida Atlantic. There's another situation where third and forever, third and 16, you've messed up first and second. Don't get crazy here. Driscoll chased again, and he'll get taken down eventually. By Jared Davis. Loss of 10. You see why Jeff Collins said Jared Davis is so important to this defense. Watch the speed in which he closes on Jeff Driscoll, on, uh, on Jason Driscoll. Boy, I tell you what, shot out of a cannon to get to the quarterback. So he's the glue of this defense. You got a lot of playmakers, Morrison, Bullard. Hargraves, but that guy is the important one. Florida Atlantic faked the punt to keep the drive alive. They couldn't find another yard. They're facing the chop and the Gator faithful, and they'll punt it away as we start the second quarter from the swamp right after this. Still no score through one quarter here in Gainesville. Florida after the game last week I had a comment by head coach Jim McElwain that was innocuous at the time, but noticed by FAU. We got a team coming in that's full of a bunch of Florida guys that wishes they were Gators. So they're going to play the hardest that they've ever played. So we've got our attention on FAU. In this day and age, billboards are digital. <laughs> and all Charlie Partridge asked his guys when they got back in the building was, did you hear? And did you notice what he said? They had all noticed as they punted away on fourth and 23. Callaway asked for a fair catch. There are a lot of familiar faces in this game. In fact, 53 players who completed together competed together at 16 Florida high schools sharing the field today and adds a little bit of spice to a non conference game and Florida Atlantic not going to a bowl this season two and eight they've been to two in their history they know that they could make some big noise and this could be their Super Bowl. Yeah, it could and a lot of players for Florida out of this game and defensively I think they've they've gone toe to toe with the mighty Gators and they've they've held their own so far. They just got to get some things shirt up on offense. But look at listening to that comment. I don't know that Jim McElwain meant anything by that. But whatever you can do and grab a hold of to fire your team up you do it. Harris goes deep down the sideline Callaway couldn't bring it down coverage by Cravon LeBlanc. It's been some pretty tight coverage and it felt like LeBlanc is playing some pretty good football. He had Daywan Smith, who was a third round pick in last year's draft out of Florida Atlantic. They feel like LeBlanc is playing better football at this stage in his senior year than the third round pick Smith. So he may have an opportunity to show up on Sundays and, and play. Callaway in the jet sweep, they give it to Taylor instead, and that one slipped wow. out. Another tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Florida thus far has won 15 yeah. plays. And a good chunk of them, five of them, have gone for zero or negative yardage. Now watch the penetration. Watch them get up the field here and disrupt the timing. Coley again 
making a play. And when I talked to Doug Nussmeyer, I said, what, are, what does Florida Atlantic do defensively? Well, how can they concern you? What problems do they present? present? Number 11, Trayvon Coley is who he identified right away, and he has really had played a big or a significant part in this game early. Florida has faced an average of 13 and a third yards to go on third down. Harris trying to get this one with his legs, and looks like he is brought down just short. Tackle made by Jalen Young. Florida runs the ball more with Trayon Harris at quarterback. That might be obvious to some, but part of it is because part of his progressions. You see Florida Atlantic kind of stunts their way inside, and that opened up a nice alley for Trayvon Trayon Harris. He just went where the defense was. They go inside, they left an area of the field voided. And you know a smart player is going to figure it out and get close to the first down marker. So on fourth and short, they punt it away. Stoshak gets away from it. This is going to take a Florida <laughs> roll all the way Once inside. Again, the that's a punt you have to field. 57 yarder thus far. Johnny Townsend, the Florida, celebrating its 10th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds. Either offense doing much for the scholarship funds thus far today. We're still scoreless. Yeah. Well, Florida Atlantic backed up again. Their average starting field position is the seven. Good to see big number 90 back in the game, Jonathan Buller. Straight ahead, a yard for Greg Howell. It's just, and now some extra pushing and shoving because FAU got a guy with his helmet ripped off. Well, it's just amazing to me the failure to feel the punt, which allows to the poor field position for Florida Atlantic. I mean, that, that last one was a difference in about 15 yards of field position. We'll see here. Look, Cameron trying to work, <laughs> and he's, he's messing with the wrong guy. Well, Jared Davis, I mean, Davis. Just ripped his helmet off with his hand on the face <laughs> mask. <laughs> Didn't play a lot last year, but boy, is he playing a significant role this year. On second and nine, incomplete. Jaquez Johnson off the mark. And that's going to leave third and nine. You had to take care of the football once again. Because of the poor field position, it doesn't allow you as an offense to be aggressive. You have to, you're in protection mode down here. It's run plays inside. It's you know, quick passes where you don't take a sack. You can't allow the quarterback to sit in the pocket long and have a hit and the ball come up. Third down numbers bad because they face an average of 14 yards to gain on third. Hargraves in on the tackle to bring down Greg Howell. Just close to it. We'll see. Nice Marcus run. May also in on the stop for Florida. It's nice run by Howell to get close to the first down marker. But once again, you're going to have to punt the football away. What is it today? I mean, is it just a sleepy start for both sides? You know, one of these. Well, this is exactly what you want if you're Florida Atlantic. You just got to have some better field position. They're playing outstanding on defense. Well, as Florida, they may be a little asleep on offense, and it may have a little bit, of, little bit to do with maybe who they're playing and being up for this game. Chomp gets off a boomer. Callaway pushed all the way back to his 30. First guy couldn't bring him down. Callaway's got the sideline. Antonio Callaway looking for a block. And the punter trips him up. Our first big play of the day comes on a shoe tackle of Antonio Callaway. Ripped his Nikes right off. 57 yard punt, 52 yard return. And there's the difference. And when you keep messing around with field position, one guy, a talented player, and Callaway can change the game in one play. One special teams play has flipped the field in favor of the Florida Gators who are pretty much already in field goal range. And if Chomp doesn't make that tackle, it is bye bye. He stopped him with his size 12s. We've got an injured owl on the field. With Florida knocking on the door.
11 50. Long snapper Casey Winter was the injured owl on that punt return. He got put on his side by Jeremy Powell, the first block that sprung the big return for Antonio Callaway. Fort Atlantic's defense has been magnificent tonight. Yeah, they really have. You talk about Brandon Bryant getting the sack party started, and then Trey Hendrickson chasing Treon Harris out of bounds. He's rewarded with a sack. Another good pressure by Trayvon Coley. Excellent run stop inside by Robinson. The entire defensive line at some point have made plays in this game and with this field position so far they're going to need to come up big here just to hold Florida to a field goal attempt. Let's go down the field check in with Laura. Jim McElwain has been spending a lot of time with the Florida offensive line telling them he doesn't like their focus and doesn't like their energy so far in this game. He says I have to see more from you guys. This one's on you. Also Florida players have been coming off onto the sidelines saying it's really chippy out there. Coach is telling them don't get caught up in that. It's a football game. It should be chippy. <laughs> Here's Calvin Taylor. Gain of one and on it, first down. And it tells me when you challenge your offensive line, they're going to the running game. They're going to come off the football. They're going to attack. And they're going to allow the offensive line an opportunity to take over this football game. There they go right to Kelvin Taylor in the running game. But Florida Atlantic, as they have all afternoon long, they've responded. Five straight games with a touchdown for Taylor. And they toss it to him. He's got blockers, but he cuts back behind him and is only able to find a few. Ray Ellis in on the tackle for FAU. Pickup of a pair. Well, they've been, I mean, I just, you got to take your hat off to this defensive front of Florida Atlantic. Can't say it enough of just how well they are playing, pursuing to the football. Really no cutback angles or holes for Kelvin Taylor to work with. And now you got Florida in a passing situation and they've been able to get pressure with just those four guys up front. Just the defensive line. 30 sacks allowed for Florida. Watch the, this their 11th game. Watch the quarterback draw here. It is set up for the taking. Harris lets it go. Trying to find McGee. Pressured again. Trayvon Coley found his way into the backfield. After that great punt return, 52 yards. Now they're looking at kicking situation. Yeah, maybe forcing things. You see the four-man front? Look at all this. That's what you're looking at if you're Treon Harris. Don't take that away from him by forcing him to stay in the pocket. He can run for the first down. It's an easy quarterback draw situation when the middle of the field is empty. Austin Harden is five for nine on the season. This will be a 33-yard attempt. The junior from Atlanta. And it's up the post. Florida Atlantic keeps Florida off the scoreboard. Wow, what a defensive stand. This reminds me a lot of the Vanderbilt game where they just played a salty defense that stayed in their face all day long. Harden misses for the fifth time this season. The kicking woes continue for the Gators. You can do it. Me and Andre are going to be watching Michigan State, Ohio State. Yeah, no doubt about it. Jack Wes Johnson tried to run with it, able to find just a few yards. Michigan State, as big an underdog today as they were years ago when they knocked off number one Ohio State when Nick Saban was their head coach and Billy Burke was their quarterback. I think they win today. I think Michigan State wins. Just outright win. Book it. Wow. I'm on the books. There you go. Jay Warren now in a running back for Florida Atlantic. What a monster upset this would be. It's still very early, but neither team has been able to find its rhythm on offense. They both pulled off one big play. Florida Atlantic the fake punt. Florida the punt return, but neither team has been able to take advantage well, of it. This is going to be a free five yards here, a little offsides. In the Florida defensive line, you just pick a jersey because about three of Prior them jumped. Set. Offside, number 93 defense. Yep. Contact in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Second down. Taven Bryan, the Wyoming native. The red shirt freshman right over the, the center. Brian Cox moved first. Yeah, he jumped and may have caught Brian Cox out of the corner of his eye. 
And then he jumps. Oh, look how deep. We're playing. Here's Warren. Oh my, he almost got through. He was a step away, an arm away from breaking through Brian and a big one. It goes for seven anyway. And if he gets by Brian, that's my point, is how deep the defensive backs are playing. If he gets that block inside, he's off to the races. Slide a hand on this handoff and a first down run. What's the point of playing so deep when the opposing quarterback has only thrown for 30 yards and nothing deep. Well, they've been hit underneath a little bit, and they've had actually at one point uh, Caleb Woods on a deep pass. All it takes is one time for that, and you start playing deep. You get a little frightened about it. Well, that's great coverage. Brian Poole all over Bussy. It's a loss of three. Yeah, he's been the team's nickelback the last couple of years and led the team last year with four interceptions you see why the reactionary time does he react well in space you got the coverage down here one on one that you want That's where I'm going with the football looks one way goes over the middle that's complete to the tight end Cameron and he is a couple yards short uh, the first down it'll be third and short after a gain of 11. You know what I like about Jacquez Johnson the quick decisions he gets back makes a decision and the ball comes out. Room for Bussy. First down Florida Atlantic into Florida territory and move it after another positive gain that one goes for 12. Yeah versatile player who's good with the ball in his hands and they want to get it to Bussy in space as they do here. Former running back that moved and made the conversion to wide receiver. Nice play there by number one Henry Bussy. Florida Atlantic with a big defensive stop rewarding their defense with a nice drive and allowing them to rest on the sideline. Straight ahead Warren. Taken down by a host of Gators. Picked up one, Jared Davis. That's one of those runs to keep you honest, where linebackers aren't flying outside like Davis and Morrison. They have to stay inside to defend the run. So when you show it in the spread from the shotgun, they have to respect it. And then you get throwing lanes on the outsides. You see Morrison trying to cheat. Number three cheating up on the line of scrimmage. Out to Cameron. Lowered his shoulder before getting met by Jared Davis. Remember, they got into it earlier and Davis ripped his helmet off. It's a gain of three. Oh, what a nice, unselfish play. We saw Bussy make a play for a first down. Well, guess who throws the block for the big tight end, Tyler Cameron? It's all 5'9, 180 pound Henry Bussy working against Brian Poole in space. and. This happens that Cameron reads it correctly and allows him to pick up a nice gain on second down. This could be a quarterback run here to the right. Let's coming up the middle. Tries to go straight that way. Flag flies. And Johnson stopped a yard short of the first down. Boy, just the penalties that have hurt Florida oh, Atlantic. Wow. Holding. Number 64 of the offense. Then your penalty. And it's when they're moving the football that stalling drives deep on their own end of the field. You can have some momentum. Best drive of the football game. And then you hold, and now it's instead of it being third and medium or close to a first, a fourth down situation where Coach Partridge has got to decide whether he's going to go for it. Now you're third down and long and in protection mode and pretty much out of field goal range. That plays Johnson eight of nine for 53 yards through the air. Playing him two bad ankles. To the flat, well short of the first down. Davis lays the hit on Marcus Clark. It's a gain of nine. 45 yards and in are where they're com confident in Greg Joseph, their field goal kicker. He's there now. 
His long this season is 47. This is from 46. Florida has missed a field goal already today. This for the first score of the day. No win to speak of. He's got the distance, but wide right. So the penalty costs him some important yardage. Greg Joseph leaves the kick wide, and neither team can figure anything out thus far. Charlie Partridge's team pitching a shutout here, but they have yet to score themselves. He's in his second season as the head man at FAU. Two win season thus far. Chance for a signature win for the program. They've never beaten a top 25 team. The program was born in 1998 under the direction of the great Howard Schnellenberger. First year playing was 2001. They were the quickest team in NCAA history to go from program's birth to a bowl. They won the Sun Belt in 2007. They went to the Motor City Bowl in 2008. This is a program that was built from scratch. The first helmets they wore were hand-me-downs from the Keanu, movie, Keanu Reeves movie, The Replacements. And up until just five years ago, they were wearing practice uniforms handed down from both Notre Dame and Air Force. So chip on their shoulder and something to prove, you bet. Uh, play action. Harris chased. Flips it free and got it to the line of scrimmage. They rule he was down back inside the 20. Yeah, so third another, sack. Yeah, third sack coming by way of Hunter Snyder, a red shirt freshman who's able to get there and get to Treon Harris right there. That's close. That is close. Maybe they'll look at this. John McDade, the white hat, was right behind the play and blew the whistle. That is close. It's a difference of 11 yards. Now second and 21. Harris on the draw. There's the move to get past the 30. There's the quarterback draw that I thought was coming in the red zone. Uh, he's so athletic, so fluid. You know, and you've got the middle of the field wide open. Why not? And that takes away all the thinking. You know, you just sell the pass. And they're inviting Treon Harris to run the football, and he gets it back to a manageable situation here on third and seven. It was a gain of 14, still third and well more than they want to deal with. And then what do they do? They protect the middle of the field here. Florida 0 for 4 on third downs today. Harris staring left goes that direction and just shy of the markers Alvin Bailey. Now they were the last possession or so they were right in this area of the field and I thought Jim McElwain should entertain the thought of going for it on fourth down and he punted and once again he's going to elect to punt the football. But I think it sends a message to your football team, not just your offense and the line, but the defense that you have confidence in you to stop Florida Atlantic by going for it here. But he's going to punt and play uh, the percentages. And by the way, Johnny Townsend's averaging 46 yards a kick with a long of 57. Another fair catch taken. Stoshek saw those blue jerseys coming his way. Matt Chick, Tony Barnhart coming your way in the SEC halftime report. We'll, we will hear from Florida head coach Jim McElwain. You think his players will hear from him at halftime? I think he'll have some well-chosen words. Good. The offense looks bad. Got that. And South Carolina with its hands full against the Citadel. Those highlights coming up. Tom, Andre, back to you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Shaping up is one of those days in college football, at least early on. Here's what the West looks like. Alabama can clinch the division with an Ole Miss loss today. They have the Iron Bowl, of course, remaining next week if they do clinch the West it'll be Bama's third trip to the SEC title game in the previous four years and will be the eighth time Florida and Bama have met in the championship yeah. game Florida leads it four to three head to head looks that way but don't count out Ole Miss quite yet Johnson fires on first down and he's able to find Caleb Woods first catch for Woods a gain of seven well, I have been very very impressed with that young man and his Ability to get the football out quickly and not allow Florida to defensively to get to him. 
And he has made some pretty quick decisions. The ball's out of his hands. He's a college graduate already working towards his MBA in sport management, the well renowned sport management program at FAU. Greg Howell straight ahead. Looks like he got the first down. Needed three, got three. Jacquez Johnson, first quarterback in school history to rush for 1,500 yards and throw for 5,000. He hurt one ankle against Miami. He hurt the other ankle against Charlotte. He has battled all season. Here's Howell again. And Howell fights for another yard to give him six. Well, it's come a lot of a lot of it's come right between the tackles. I talked about Florida's quickness when you try to go laterally. Now Florida Atlantic's coming right downhill. Johnson has time. Floats one outside too strong for Bussy. It's been Howell between the tackles. Behind Dylan DeBoer, the center, and Markinson Marseille, the left guard, and they're pushing the pile right at Florida to get them here to third and four with that incompletion. FAU one of six on third down. Pocket Johnson spins free. Hargraves was the nearest man. Flag late. They got a shot on the quarterback Johnson after he let it go. Roughing the passer. Defense. Picking the passer up and punishing him into the ground. 15 yard penalty with an automatic first down. That is a detailed explanation from John McDade. Yeah, Keanu Neal, the strong safety. Watch him come in. And you see here, it's, you know, it's just pull up. You got to feel if you keep your head up, then you know the ball is gone, and you can pull up and just hold up Jacquez Johnson. But when you take him to the ground and lift him to take him down, that's going to draw the flag. Fresh set of downs for FAU. Johnson looking, looking. Complete to Stoshak. They're going to mark him forward progress at near midfield for a gain of five. It starts to get frustrating after a while for Quincy Wilson, Tabor, and, and Hargraves to where I think Johnson's going to have, and they're protecting him well enough, a double move scenario where it's a, a hook and go or a slant and go. Where he gets a double move and a chance to go up top at some point here in this drive. They move the pocket for him. And he throws it away. Duke Dawson had the coverage downfield on Jensen Stoshek. And sometimes that's the best play. Nobody's open or it's tight coverage. Just get rid of it. Out of bounds, though, where you don't leave it in the middle of the field trying to make a play where it, it winds up intercepted. But I think that's exactly what you're talking about a moment ago. Yeah. They got him time to attempt a double move yep. by rolling the pocket. No doubt about it. I mean, and to Florida's credit, they covered up on the back end. Third down five. Got what you want up top. Complete off of Tabor's hands. He's got three picks on the season. He's going to hear about that from his teammate Vernon Hargraves. They're in a battle to see who's the best corner. And they compete weekly, which is what you want as a coaching staff. Had his hands on that one and should have come up with it. Boy, does he have all the ingredients you want for a corner? Just a sophomore at 6'1, at 190, a little over 190 pounds. The rarest combination of size, speed, and quickness. Trick play here for FAU. 151 to go in the half. Ball at midfield. Shop has run for a first down and a fake punt. Callaway fair catch requested. And uh, this is likely to end scoreless in the first half unless Florida comes up with a big play. A big, busy day of college football on the SEC network. Later this afternoon, Charleston Southern on their way to the FCS playoffs have a detour through Tuscaloosa. They did take on number two, Alabama. That same time, Idaho and Auburn meet on the alternate channel. Then tonight, 
Vandy puts its defense on the field against Texas A&M. First ever visit for the Aggies to Nashville's West End. And Kentucky draws Charlotte on the alternate channel. It's SEC college football all day on the SEC Network. I'm bewildered right now. Special teams and these fair catches inside the 10 yard line. When does that become OK? You know, the last couple of years, it seems it's been more acceptable. And I don't have an answer why Cronkite gets back to the line of scrimmage. My, my question is why? What's the difference in having it at the five or the two? At least at that point, it's got a chance to roll into the end zone where you get it at the 20 yard line. I would take my percent take the percentages or play the percentages in that instance more so than fair catching it on the five yard line. And it's Florida Atlantic's guilty of it just as much as Florida. Add to that Florida's offense has been anemic today. They just can't get going forward. Hundred and second in the country rushing offense coming in. They have 64 total yards. Cronkite. Let's go down to Laura. Tom, you can see the frustration all over the Florida faces on their sideline. And offensive line coach Mike Summers and D-line coach Chris Rumpf doing everything they can to fire these guys up. They've been trying to all game, saying we have to play like we care about this one. And look what's happening. They're not even focusing on their own positions groups. They're talking to everybody. I watched this exact same thing play itself out last Monday night. Houston Texans, Cincinnati Bengals undefeated. And you wind up in the fourth quarter and hear the Texans still in the ball game who everybody had defeated and they wind up winning the game. This is almost identical. Now third and eight. Stop Harris here. Maybe they use a timeout to get the ball back. Timeout taken. 15 First seconds left on the clock. The Florida punted away. You got Florida headed for the SEC championship game. They've got Florida State next Florida, week. Yep. I mean, it, it seems so, it resembles last Monday night so, so much to me. Florida Atlantic doing all they can. The officials added two seconds to the game clock while we're in the timeout, so 17 seconds left in the first half. Florida Atlantic will be on the receiving end of this punt. Jensen Stoshak stands just outside of the 40. Jim McElwain's team held scoreless in his first half. That hadn't happened to Florida since last year against Missouri. That debacle. Stoshak has an opportunity here. Changes direction twice. Can't get upfield and goes down. So six seconds on the clock. Punt return game not doing many favors for the Owls. 57 yard punt, five yard return. <laughs> you got to pick a side. Because Florida's so fast in that punt return. You got to commit somewhere. Running around, you're not going to make, you know, 11 guys miss you. Missouri came into the swamp last year, jumped out to a 20 nothing lead. Florida couldn't hold on to the football in that one. I think if you're Florida Atlantic right now, don't do anything to give Florida points. Kneel it down. Go into halftime. You don't take a shot. No way. Okay. Not 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 right here. Marcus Clark if I'm up around the 50 that's a different story but right here I kneel it down Marcus Clark is the running back and they'll give it to him straight ahead and Florida Atlantic will be pleased as punch to hit the locker room without having allowed a point we'll hear from Laura with Jim McElwain coming up on the SEC Network halftime report we are deadlocked to goose eggs through one half a play here in the swamp Florida Atlantic looking for a program defining win now let's take it to Matt Schick in the studio. All right, thank you, Tom. Matt Chick, along with Tony Barnhart, Mr. Cal. You're watching Dr. Pepper Road to the Championship. Well, a remarkable development through one half here at the Swamp. Number eight, Florida, has a grand total of 69 yards of offense. There is no score between FAU and the Gators. Tom Hart, Heisman winner, Andre Ware. So let me ask you this. How much do we blame Florida for shooting themselves in the foot? And how much credit do we give to the Owls defense? Well, I, I think Florida, all Florida's players are missing on defense, right? But yep. so it's total credit to Florida Atlantic and what they're doing on the defensive side of the football to Florida. It's the defensive line. They've been able to get pressure when needed. Brandon Bryan got it started along with Trey Hendrickson. Another sack. Here comes Trevon Coley. He gets in the in the mix and then 
Robinson Eugene making plays. They harassed Treon Harris the entire first half of this game, and all the credit, in my opinion, goes to Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic has never beaten a top 25 team in 15 tries. The average margin of defeat is greater than 37 points. This would indeed be a program-defining victory for the Owls and their head coach, Charlie Partridge. Meanwhile, for Florida, they do have a berth in the SEC title game already secured, but also a chance to advance in the college football playoff. That would be erased unless they can find some offense today. Florida Atlantic will get the ball to start the second half. They have been close in a lot of games this year. And lost games by a touchdown or less in eight games in Coach Partridge's tenure at Florida Atlantic. They're looking to close one out finally here today against Florida. Henry Bussey will take a knee in the end zone. What does this game mean in the first half for FAU? Moments ago, Laura Rutledge stopped head coach Charlie Partridge. Thanks, coach. Your defense is able to hold their offense scoreless in the first half. How did they do it? You know what? Really just a great plan by Coach Bellantoni and the staff, and our players are doing their job and playing with great fundamentals. It's not that hard of a game. Put yourself in a great position to win this one. How do you get some more offense going in the second half? You know what? They're they're one of the best defenses we've seen all year. We know this is going to be a, a four-quarter challenge the entire entire game. We just got to take it one play at a time, make some throws and catches, and get ourselves down the field. And it might be a field goal game. We don't know. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And the funny thing about that is if it is a field goal game, yeah. the edge would go to Florida Atlantic. They've both missed field goals today. Florida missed a chip shot. They've had kicking issues all season long. We do have an injured player on the return, Jake Stoshak, brother of Jensen Stoshak. Redshirt freshman out of University Christian in Jacksonville, helped to his feet. Got one hit on the play that was no return and may have turned his ankle. Yeah, you'll see there, he just comes up limping just a little bit. And usually that's when uh, the old ankle. Just kind of roll it over just enough where it's irrit it irritates you a little bit. The older brother coming in to check on it. Gives him the thumbs up and let's go play. Jacquez Johnson efficient, but no big plays for FAU in the first half. Johnson steps up in the pocket, goes down. Kerry Clark, first man to get to him. It's a loss of three. And did it without blitzing. Kerry Cl Clark making his first start in place of Caleb Brantley. And you'll see just a four man rush. Nice push up front. Continues to take the center. Devore all the way back to Jaquez Johnson and then made the play. Second and 13. Batted away. Jonathan Bullard, who injured his knee in the first quarter, back on the field for the Gators. You can see he's less than 100%, yeah. but made a play. Almost like dragging it to a degree, and you see, you know, there's either a brace or some kind of sleeve on that right knee of Jonathan Bullard. Well shy of 100%. Third and long. Four man rush. Johnson hesitate. Got it out to Bussy for a loss of three. Playing that drive, being very conservative when they didn't have any success on first down. You know, now they just want to take care of the football, punt, and play defense. So you do it, and there it is conservative play calling. Does this go back to what we talked about in the first half? An opportunity to lull him to sleep and then go over the top? Well, I, I think so, but you wanted to move the football to really take control of the game at some point. One of these teams 
going to have to step outside of their comfort zone at some point. What a punt. Wow. Dalton Shaw pushes Callaway all the way back to the 20. May have kicked his coverage. Flag down. Callaway pass midfield. Trying to beat the punter again. Shaw with a touchdown saving tackle for the second time today. Yeah, but, but a flag all the way back at the 22. It's coming back for a block in the back, I'm afraid, right around the 22 23 yard line. That was a 60 yard punt and a 60 yard return. During the return, legal block in the back. Number 31 receiving team. Now he's half the distance to the goal line. First down. It's right in here. It's right there. If you fall face first, that's going to get called. If you fall, if the block's thrown and the defender falls on his back, they will never call it. Or his side. Or his side. So a missed opportunity for Florida. Correction, the penalty is 10 yards. Thirteen twenty-three to go in the third quarter. Number eight, Florida, in a stalemate with Florida Atlantic. In recent history, the Gators have shown a proclivity to escape the clutches of defeat. You only have to go back to Will Muschamp's second season. November 10th, Gators 8-1, sixth-ranked team in the country. Luchez Purifoy with the block punt. Jelani Jenkins scoops it up, takes it 36 yards, basically to finish the game, to knock off Louisiana Lafayette and survive. They would end up going to the Sugar Bowl that season. So there are some parallels, especially if they don't get things going offensively. Poor field position here to start a drive. And you know, I think I, I may look up Callaway. He's been so explosive in punt returns that have been called back because of penalties. You may have what you want up top. This, you know, Treon Harris is a good deep ball thrower. Protect, Max protect, and let him have one on the outside. Calvin Taylor is running back. Here's a note for you on Florida. They haven't lost a home game to a non-conference opponent since Memphis came in in 1988 and knocked them off. That's a run of 54 consecutive wins for the Gators. Flags down as they got the ball into the betty of Callaway. Start. Number 21 offense. It was Five Taylor the running back. First down. Maybe caught Taylor leaning because he was Obviously a little closer towards the line of scrimmage where Callaway could come in motion and they wanted to just flip it to him. Oh, well, that changes things even more where you, know, you don't want to make a mistake down here. You may have to be a little e even more conservative. The pistol work in here. I don't know if we've seen this many bigs in the field at the same time for Florida today. Taylor busted through stayed on his feet. And he takes it all the way out to the 26 yard line. A 19 yard burst for Kelvin Taylor before Raquan Williams brought him down. Yeah, that's a grown man run right there. That is, I'm going to take it on my shoulders and do something. Nice job of blocking and a second level block by the true freshman Martez Ivy to free up Kelvin Taylor. But right here, nice cutback. And this is what he does so well. He's a good north south runner that can put his foot in the ground and make defenders miss. Longest play of the game for either side. Taylor dropped from behind this time by Brandon Bryant. A loss of a yard. You can see the emotion that Florida Atlantic's playing with the end of the half with it with Bryant. A couple other guys flexing yeah. for the Florida fans. Well, they give up a few plays, but they haven't given up the giant play. And Brandon Bryant really got this thing started defensively with the first sack of the game for Florida Atlantic. Fighting his way back from a knee injury, and he has been solid today. FAU shows pressure. They bring it late. Harris down the sideline. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Demarcus Robinson. Yeah, the formation dictates the coverage on the outside, and you get the man the man you want. Treon Harris has just got to deliver. And Robinson trying to give him the four yards in which to fade him away from the defender and catch the ball in bounds, but Harris just floats it right on out of bounds. But you see the pressure once again. Florida is 0 for 6 on third down. The average yard to gain has been nearly 10 and a half. On this season, they're pretty good at 40%. Not today. 
And Hunter Snyder having a nice game. Red shirt freshman from Palm Harbor, Florida. Harris looking towards Callaway. Comes off him, has a chance to run, and he will get taken down by Trey Hendrickson. Florida Atlantic playing with that emotion. Hendrickson gets to him again. I don't know. Maybe that message Coach Partridge told his players about, you know, with Coach McElwain after last week's win got through because there's a lot of emotion. And usually the adrenaline in the football game lasts for about three series, and then it kind of dissolves and the better team starts to take control. Florida Atlantic very much in this football game. Florida's punt team has been its strength all season, and especially today, I should say. It's not a great one. Stoshak again asked for the fair catch. He had room to spare, but he takes it at the 30. On Wednesday, the SEC Network grants you an all-access pass inside the Arkansas football program as they play host to Dak Prescott in Mississippi State. Join the team before, during, and after the game. SEC Inside, presented by Chick-fil-A, Wednesday at 7 Eastern on SEC Network. That's going to be a physical game. Holy smokes. How about Arkansas? Well, the schedule they had down the stretch to get themselves to six and four and, and win out and win eight games for Brett Bielema. It's a heck of a job after a slow start to the season. Jason Driscoll as planned. In for Florida Atlantic for this second series of the second half. His brother Jeff won 15 games as a starter here at Florida. Driscoll going to midfield and incomplete. Henry Bussey, the intended receiver. We just got to catch the football. That's a couple on a couple of occasions. He did the same thing with Caleb Woods. Hit him right between the eight and the nine. Similar route. Put it on the ground. Henry Bussey on an in route. Hits him right in the middle of the one. Can't hold on to it. Two of five, but a couple of those, at least two have been major drops for Jason Driscoll. Gotta hurry and get this thing off. Play clock down inside 10 seconds. Now he's got to move Bussy. They just get it off. Driscoll scrambling. Avoids a big hit. And maybe just short of a first down after a nine yard scramble. Jared Davis with the tackle. He's going to be about half a yard short and he's got some wheels. Johnson gets the credit for being the runner, but he has got some quicks. I'm talking about Driscoll here. Nice run in the open field. On third and one, he takes it himself to pick up the first down. We've seen this before from Florida Atlantic, trying to go with the tempo after a positive play. And, and they've moved it. Yeah. When they go tempo, they've been able to move it. It's a penalty, a hold, or something. That throws them off schedule. Pump left side, come back to the right, and there's a catch. Nine yard gain for Caleb Woods. Now that's knowing the offense right there, where you pump left, scan the field, and come all the way back to Caleb Woods. Nice job. On second and short. Jay Warren picks up the first down. They are now moving with success against Florida, the fifth ranked defense in the country. Gain of eight for Warren. When they go tempo, and there's about three different speeds in which Florida Atlantic likes to operate. As Brian Wright told us that earlier in the week, it seems as though Florida may be getting a little winded yeah, when Florida change. Atlantic speeds it up. They replace the entire defensive line just now. Remember, they're already down three guys on the defensive line coming into the game. Driscoll, pop, balls loose. Scooped up by the Gators, Taven Bryan. He's got a convoy. Bryan rumbles inside the five. There's your big play. Antonio Morris enforced it. Bryant scooped up the loose ball. Yeah, he wanted to throw the screen, roll and then throw it, and he looked, it may have, he may have lost the football trying to go backside with it to Tony Thomas. 
And then all of a sudden the big fellas rumbling towards the end zone. You knew it would take some play to bust this game wide open. It just happened to be Florida's defense that made the play. Charlie Partridge is talking with the officiating crew. He may want to he may want to replay this but what the, these SEC crews do is the guys in the booth have already taken a look at this play three or four times and, yeah. and what they're saying to Charlie Partridge is you can challenge it if you want but our guys have already looked at it save your time out essentially and he's just wondering any chance that was an incomplete pass is what Charlie Partridge is wondering. Driscoll at that point would have been better Carl served. Anders challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. And, and I understand why. Because of the risk reward. If there's any chance that it was a forward pass, you save essentially a score here by, you know, by by giving up a field goal. I mean, a timeout if you don't. So I, I think you you definitely challenge it because it could be it could wind up being the difference in the ball game. Robert Rougeau is our replay official today. Earlier in that sequence was when Jason Driscoll should have just thrown the football away or cover it up and eat it and take the sack. You see anything in that replay that would suggest it could have been a forward pass right here. It looks like he's winding it up to throw it but then he brings it back right there. It looks like he's winding it up and it's like he's trying to throw it in the dirt. After video review the ruling on the it. field is confirmed. Yeah. First down Florida. Yeah. I, I don't Florida see the. Loses the first charge timeout of the half. And Florida Atlantic loses its first challenge. The true intent in which to try to get rid of the football. Well the ruling was confirmed by the replay booth. So they feel like they had a clear look at it upstairs and it's first and goal for Florida. It's all these guys right here right now for Florida. Let's see who can push who. Kelvin Taylor is a touchdown on the ground in five straight games. There's Brian Cox the lead blocker. They love to use him their defensive end as a lead blocker. And they go right off the edge here to the right. That's McGee in motion. Taylor. Turns leans he's in touchdown Florida first score of the game. Now 13 rushing touchdowns on the season for Calvin Taylor a Gators running back hasn't hit that mark since his father Fred at I think 13 and 90. I think when they look at it he's short he's down right here and the ball hadn't crossed the goal line or touched it and. Brandon Bryant had a chance to actually hit Taylor in the backfield. The rolling for the field is touched down. This play now under video review. It actually would have been a loss on the play had Bryant made the tackle, but I think he's short of the goal line. Let's take another look. You see here, tackle being made. His backside is down right there. And the ball, here's the goal line. It's nowhere near. I think it's this this gets overturned and it's second down. Ruling on the field was touchdown. Consecutive plays going to the replay booth and making Robert Rougeau do some work today. If they rule him down at the one or inside it. It'll be second and goal for Florida. As it stands, it's the first Florida touchdown in 19 possessions at home. You have to go back to the first quarter against Vanderbilt. As this review continues, you assume that they're looking for both the spot and the clock. Right. After video review, it is not a touchdown. The runner's backside was down at the two yard line with the ball at the one. The ball we placed at the one yard line will be second and goal. That's the correct call. Florida Atlantic fighting to hold this to a 
closest to field goal attempt. You go back to Kelvin Taylor. Oh, no doubt about it. All the power in which he runs, low center of gravity. He's got the ability to spin out of tackles. Yes, sir. Go right back to him. Taylor again in traffic. In this time, touchdown Florida. Somehow he squirted through the scrum, running behind David Sharp and company. He is a different player this year, playing with way more confidence than he was a year ago. Watch him here, watch him get low. It's powerful. You see the legs continue to push. It's clear there. There's a that's a touchdown as he extends it. Austin Harden on for the extra point. But well, took nearly two and a half quarters to find our first score. Number eight, Florida. Gets a rushing touchdown from Calvin Taylor. And it's a 7 0 lead for Florida. They flip the field by this scoop and rumble. The three of 10 on third downs today. It's Stoshek down there. Johnson pressured. And he goes down. Jared Davis with his second sack of the game. Fifth this, for Florida. This kid is something else. He is the heart and soul of this defense. Plays with great intensity. And didn't play much at all last year. But you see him as Johnson steps up in the pocket. Who's waiting? Jared Davis right there. That's my responsibility once he comes to me. And he steps up and makes a nice play. Jeff Collins could not have passed out enough praise for Davis and how much he means to Florida's defense. Callaway takes it at the 16. 7 0. Florida leads Florida Atlantic. 747 remaining in the third quarter. We got a flag on the play. We got multiple flags. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 48 of the receiving team. Penalties have to distance the goal line. First down. Timeout. It's Anthony Harrell who gets a talking to from Jim McElwain on the Florida sideline. Gators will have a chance to add to their lead for the first time today. Yeah. All right, Matt, thank you. Here, 7 0 Florida. Let's go down to the field and check in with Laura Rutledge. Tom, Vernon Hargraves has spent the entire second half in the locker room. He's dealing with some stomach issues. I'm told they're giving him some crackers, trying to settle his stomach down, and he would return if they can get that under control. I'll keep you updated as I hear more. All right, Laura, thank you. Kelvin Taylor in at running back for Florida. I made a mention that Florida hasn't had. A home non-conference loss in 54 games. That was as a ranked team. Florida as a ranked team hasn't lost at home to an unranked non-conference team since Memphis in 1988. Of course, Georgia Southern came in here a couple years ago and upset Will Muschamp's Gators, but Florida wasn't ranked then. Saltina Ritz. That's, a, that's the question of the day. Because you know a Ritz <laughs> is not a regular cracker. <laughs> Oh my man. It all comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> that started way early. <laughs> <laughs> Second and seven. Harris has all day. Deep man. Incomplete flag coming. Raquan Williams is sophomore at a First Coast High School in Jacksonville. Never made a play on the ball. Test interference. Number 23 defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And all he had to do was turn his head around to make a play on the football. He never turns his head. Now he's he's got Callaway one on one out there. It turns. It was zone coverage, but boy, he did look back. Yeah, he did look back. Oh, hits him in the back. It's thrown way inside where it should not have been thrown. He's looking over his outside shoulder and 
Well, there's a question there. So Florida catches a break. They've been held to 94 total yards thus far today. Straight ahead, Taylor. Ooh, dangerous. Tried to spin in traffic. He's able to pick up four. Aziz Al Shair, the freshman from Tampa Hillsboro, had the tackle. When a mistake was made for Florida Atlantic offensively, turnover. But this defense has been straight up solid all game long. Nine possessions, only six first downs. They're 0 for 7 once you get them to third down. Just 98 yards of offense. Cronkite, the freshman tailback in. They go to him out of the backfield. He's got blocking downfield. And Cronkite steps out of bounds just shy of the 50. Gain of 16. Boy, they do a nice job with Callaway motioning him in. And essentially, it becomes a natural pick for Cronkite to get to the flat. Watch. The motion, well, we don't see it, it's already happened, but everybody comes in and it causes two Florida Atlantic players to really collide, and that allowed for Cronkite to get outside by himself in a nice easy throw from Treon Harris. Harris, pocket holds, goes deep, man got a step, Callaway! Into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. Antonio Callaway, 53 yards. Gonna been asking for it all day. At what point were you gonna find Callaway when Treon Harris is such a good deep ball thrower? They're selling out to stop the run, which means you're gonna have some one on one coverage on the back end. The play fake, he doesn't waste a lot of time. Gets the ball up. That allows Callaway to run under it and working against Williams beats him again. One of the best freshman wide receivers in all of college football. A four play 91 yard drive for Florida. Antonio Callaway at a Booker T in Miami hooks up with another Booker T product. Harris to Callaway, two touchdown lead Gators. Time now for today's Good Hands play, brought to you by Allstate. Another look at Treyon Harris to Antonio Callaway. Well, Treyon Harris sets him up, or out Callaway sets him outside, and then Treyon Harris just puts a lot of air under the football. Well thrown ball, better catch with a defender draped all over him. But this kid's a playmaker, punt returner. You just knew at some point he was going to be a he was going to make a big play in this game. And what was that one huge? Seven touchdown pass from Treyon Harris this season against three interceptions. Cravon LeBlanc back to return for Florida Atlantic, along with Marcus Clark. LeBlanc from the goal line. To the 20, and he fights for a few more out past the 25. It's a much heralded Florida recruiting class. Laura was here on signing day. Laura, what was the mood that day? Tom, everybody was talking about Martez Ivy and CC Jefferson, the two five star recruits in McElwain's first class, but he kept mentioning Antonio Callaway, saying he would be such a special player. He continued to talk about him. Obviously, he knew a little bit of something that he was talking about. He also mentioned Jordan Cronkite and Jordan Scarlett as potential playmakers. He told us it was out of necessity that these guys have gotten so much playing time, but they've been able to prepare well consistently, and they've shown a lot of maturity this season. Part of the 20th ranked recruiting class that Jim McElwain put together here in Gainesville and immediate impacts. McElwain seems to have a thing for that, seeing things before everybody else does. Here's Howell, who picks up uh, three, kind of like when we asked him yesterday. I said, Coach, you said before the season started we're going to have 15 opportunities this year. That means you're going to be playing for a national championship. Was that just coach speak, or did you see something from this team? And his answer was simple. He said, listen, 
I don't know why you'd go into anything unless you wanted to be and thought you could be the best at what you're doing. Yep, unless you thought you were going to win each and every time you line up. And he plays to win. According to him yesterday, it's every time you lace him up, he's playing to win the game. Deep ball. Stoshak hauls it in as he goes to the turf. Into Florida territory, a 29-yard strike from Johnson to Stoshak. Well, this is a former walk-on. Look at this, laying out. He's a hand-catch guy that you just put it in the general area, and he makes plays for you. Doesn't have to be the perfect pass, but he hauls them in. And now left side for Howell. And a stiff arm. Wow, he put Tabor on his back. Tabor got a little off balance, and Howell sent him to Alcala. It's a 12-yard gain. That'd take a little coolness out of you right there. <laughs> that's that's just disrespectful. Uh, wow. <laughs> You'll hear about that in the film room. <laughs> Howl again. Straight up the middle for 10. What do you say in these days? Swag? Yes. He, he's, a little, he's missing some swag he, he after left that some, stiff arm. He left some swag on the turf <laughs> that had knocked out of him. <laughs> they didn't move the chains yet. And the referee will come in and say it's a first down. Nobody else did. So a fresh set of downs for Florida Atlantic. Don't forget about these guys. The Owls got to put up some offense. This is when they've been at their best is when they when they go hurry up and try to wear down Florida. Now they're substituting and. Yeah, you'd have you should stay in a formation so when Florida tries to substitute between the chains being moved you could catch him and quick snap him. Howell again. Wow just gashing nine that time. Ten the play before nine then and it's been right through the center and two guards where Howell has had his success running the football. Second and one to Pump fake and now take off on the draw. Johnson is able to get the first down. But he'd have gone ahead and given the ball to Tyler Cam Tyler Cameron. He had some. I mean, he had a couple of blockers out there, and it looked like Cameron wasn't ready for the football. So what does Johnson do? Pull it down and go pick up the first down. This is a nice drive here by Florida Atlantic to maybe get themselves back in this ball game. Being down two scores, you get a touchdown here, you got a lot of a lot of time the entire fourth quarter to get back in it. Fade in zone. Incomplete. Caleb Woods. Covered by Tabor and company. Tabor, it's, excuse me, Woods at 6'3", 193, and Tabor, about 6'1", can go up and fight him. There's a nice job in terms of positioning his body into the receiver where you can fight and get to the highest point. Powell can't get through the line. That's going to leave third and goal from the 10. Four down territory here for Florida Atlanta. Yeah, I was just wondering, you got to take the points, don't you? Your defense I, I think has you been do. so good. I think you do. You have to reward your football team with with some success after going down the field here. So I, I think if you get to fourth down, you go ahead and take the field goal. Here. Hey, if you're at the two, I might feel differently. But no if doubt. you're at the ten, yep. Ninth play of the drive. The play Clock's clock down. at four. Johnson short of the goal line caught big touchdown Caleb Woods got his hands on it and he takes it in Don't tell Florida Atlantic they can't come in here and win What a drive by Jaquez Johnson to continue to convert Howell with a running game a nice mixture of Run and pass, and then it's Woods capping off a nice drive. Brian Wright, the offensive coordinator, putting a nice mix of plays together. Egg Joseph bangs through the extra point. 
nine play 75 yard scoring drive to answer Florida. This is a Florida team that with the win in the SEC championship game will be looking at a berth in the college football playoff but you know full and well beauty points matter. Yep. Now. They matter big and with already one loss on their resume they have a couple more big wins but they're putting themselves in that danger territory. People already sitting on the fence with them offensively in terms of can they move it what what's it supposed to look like defensively they look they looked the apart offensively is where the question marks have come in and until that big play over the top there was still question mark Stosak got it started with a nice grab on the outside and here comes the stiff arm from Howell on Tabor another nice run inside for about 10 yards to move the chains and then the touchdown pass to uh, Caleb Woods from Jaquez Johnson caps off that 75 yard drive you talked about this is this was a nice mix of run and pass. Brandon Powell will bring it out from three yards in. Tripped up at the 20. Full day of action for you on the SEC Network coming up at 4 o'clock. Number two, Alabama in action at home against Charleston Southern. On the alternate channel, Idaho is on the plane to take on Auburn. Then tonight, under the lights on Nashville's West End, AM's first ever visit to Vandy. Alternate channel has Charlotte and Kentucky. Did Vanderbilt generate enough offense? Because we know they're going to play well on, on defense, but can they generate enough offense to knock off Texas A&M tonight? I think the biggest question is, can Texas A&M find some offense? Yeah. Because the way they're playing, it won't take much. That's what happens when you start flip-flopping quarterbacks. Kentucky will start Barker at quarterback tonight. They bench toll snap went high through the hands of Harris, and he's able to fall on it. Wow. Oh boy. Wow. It's a loss of 14. Field position an issue, but this was nearly a takeaway. And Coley is right there. He's he's got a path to it. Treat Treon Harris is able to get back on the football. Kevin Taylor there to help him out, but boy, now it changes things instead of being. You know, second and long, second and medium. Now you've got to play a little more conservatively down here inside your 10 yard line. And if you can get off the field without giving up this first down, Florida Atlantic's going to have some pretty good field position. But first, thing, first things first, and they've been solid right along here all game long on the defensive line. Cameron Dillard is the center, his 11th start of the season. Here's a toss to Taylor trying to find the edge. He's got the angle, and he's able to get. Out to the 18, about gain of nine. Call it the 17, actually, and that's going to leave third and long. Yeah, gave up a little bit too much on second down. Herb Miller, the corner, played outside in leverage. He's staying outside as long as he could to force Taylor inside. Now you got to get some help. You got to get some Cowboys or some Owls in this case <laughs> to rally up the troops and and help out. And gave up a little bit too much on second down. Where's the rest of the posse I'm out here all by myself. Florida hasn't converted a third down all day. Treon steps up. He's got some room to scramble. There's a first down and a beautiful bend back to take it all the way up to the 42 before Miller brings it oh, down. He and took a shot. He took a shot Tom. 25 yard run. He Josh took Grady is his backup. A shot the Vanderbilt transfer. It's right at the end of this. You know, once again, there it is. When things break down, there's a lot of room in front of Treon Harris, who pulls it down. Dynamic runner. Nice move there. And right at the end of it, Herb Miller, that shot from the back. It's just a graze of the back of the helmet. He's looking at his lower back, but there's. They have time to get Grady warm with the play, yep. uh, game clock winding out on the third quarter. The Vandy transfer hasn't played since October 3rd, the third and a blowout win against Ole Miss. Third quarter comes to an end. We'll see if Grady takes multiple. Treon Harris took a shot to the back on his 25-yard scramble for a first down. He will give way to Josh Grady, the Vanderbilt transfer, for at least a snap.
I'm betting it's a handoff. You think? <laughs> it could shock the world. Grady and go moved, deep to Callaway here. <laughs> Grady moved to wide out in the spring with their quarterback situation. He was only getting a couple of snaps per practice. Taylor is his running back on first down. Toss to Taylor. Brought down just shy of the 50. Treon Harris coming back in the game. Hunter Snyder had the tackle. Grady checking his wristband, wondering when he's going to get a chance to throw a pass. <laughs> Tell me, they told us yesterday he's ready and they've got confidence in him if they have to play him. Powell in motion they fake it to him and give it to Taylor first down plenty more on the sideline and Florida starting to get it done in the running game LeBlanc forced him out after a gain of 19 boy just a totally different player from a year ago watch him take this and get north and south in a hurry and then watch him finish this run right there just finish it instead of allowing someone to contact him he draw he he initiates the contact Marcus Robinson blocking downfield for him Jim McWayne doesn't hand out game balls he said we honor the guys whose names don't show up in the box scores the guys who do the little things oh, to yeah. help those guys make big plays on play action Treon looking shuffles lobs Robinson intercepted picked off by Florida Atlantic Gerard Neesman ends the floor to drive, and the Owls are going to have it with 13 36 to go down a touchdown. And yeah, of all that shouldn't have been thrown, there's going to be about three different receivers around. The intended receiver here that Treon Harris is trying to go to. He just lets it go. But look at two, two in double coverage right there, and Sherrod Neesman playing center field, LeBlanc underneath. Trying to force one into Robinson. And a nice play by that by Neesman, his third interception of the year, and decent field position for Florida Atlantic to try to tie this ball game. That's one you want to check down or make sure it gets on out of the back of the end zone. Jay Warren at tailback. Play action. Jacquez Johnson had it tipped and flutters incomplete. Wait and you're late over the middle. Bad things happen. There's safeties and strong safeties and corners that fall back in. All those things happen. Four man rush. Johnson out of the pocket again. Running on two bad ankles. Couldn't change direction. Jared Davis pops him for no game. Got a receiver is just in La La Land. What Solomon freeze it right here. I mean, give me a target. Turn your shoulders. Let me know that you're that you're running to be covered. Stop right there, and I can get you the football. But if you keep running, you're running right into the coverage. Johnson to Cameron. It is ripped away. Taken away by Florida. Jalen Tabor steals it from Tyler Cameron. I think he just got his swag back, Tom. Yes. He took it back. He took it back. That's why he's such a dynamic young playmaker right here. A catch by Cameron. And then right there just takes it away from him. What a nice play. Just a ball hawk right there. Grinding it out, just taking it, taking it away, and it's clear. That's Florida's football. Now, this is a situation where if I'm Jim McElwain or Doug Nussmeyer, you go to the end zone here 
Big takeaway, sudden change. Go get points. Taylor straight ahead. Officially, they ruled that an interception for Tabor. So that's his fourth of the year tying in with Vernon Hargraves, the team lead. After the gain of six, second and four. Keep an eye on DeAndre Goolsby, who just checked in. The 30 right here. A touchdown catch on the season. Taylor tries to cut back at his footing slip. It's a gain of one. The message is simple for this Florida defense in this battle with FAU. Whether you want to hashtag it or not, get the ball. They did so. The turnover so far has led directly to seven points. And then here, you're working on maybe more points. You're already... Well, you can't just say field goal range because no. he's... He's missed one, and it's been a struggle for most of the season in that category for the Gators. But in most, most senses, it would be already in field goal range. He doinked one from 33 in the first half. Taylor Ooh. smothered and dropped. He goes backwards for a yard. Oh, Nate Ozdemir. Ozdemir. Ooh. Ozdemir came up with bad intentions. Watch the guy in the middle. Watch 50 right here. Watch him make this play square up and then deliver. Uh, training to be a pilot on his off days. He goes and takes flight lessons. Wants to be a uh, wants to go into the military and fly planes once his playing days are over. Would you fly with him? Uh, no. <laughs> Not yet. He, uh, Austin Harden put it off the upright from 33. This is from 34. Harden five of ten on the year. This one is wide right. 0 for two from chip shot range. It keeps the difference seven points. Amazing. This Florida team is nine and one. They've won the East. They have one of the best defenses in the country, but there are holes, and the holes have been exposed today. Well, some tight ones around the league today, perhaps unexpected. Two missed kicks today for Austin Harden out of Marist School in Atlanta. Things got so desperate for Jim McElwain. He put out a call for an open trial on October 21st after that LSU game. 225 guys roughly responded. They brought him to the brand new, sparkling new indoor facility to uh, see if anybody could kick. Austin McKinnis, pre dental, was uh, given a uniform, but he hasn't been put into play. Jay Warren picks up a hard pair of yards. Thus far today, Florida has missed a pair of field goals from 33 and from 34 off the foot of Harden, who took over field goal duties late in the year last year and hit 70% and had a long of 52, didn't miss an extra point. Your golf swing ever go south on you, Andre? Well, all the time. I mean, yeah. That's why you end up at the range for hours. But uh, eventually it comes back. Johnson at second and seven to the sticks, maybe just a yard short. And he is not afraid to fit it into a window. That's Cameron Solomon that time. It'll be a first down by the nose of the football. Well, and this has been a hot offense once they get in that tempo. They've been able to move the ball when they go fast. Draw for Johnson ran into his own man. They're really limited with Jacquez Johnson. He's a senior. He owns so many records at Florida Atlantic, but two ankle injuries have really limited what they can do in the running game with him. Yeah, it's when one seems to heal itself up, then he'll turn the other one and then vice versa. So it's been tough to get him even close to 100% where he can run the ball and be effective in that area. Former Conference USA Newcomer of the Year out of East Mississippi Community College. Johnson is Starkville, Mississippi native. Looking for Clark out of the backfield off his fingertips. Third and nine. Well, he tried to lead him where he could catch it and let his momentum continue to take him forward. It might have been a little bit better served to put it on his body. 
make sure that he catches the football. We'll come up with some big third downs in this ball game. I'm going to need a couple of more before it's over if they're going to win it. Tips nearly picked by Tabor. He had his hands on it. He already has one takeaway today. It'll bring on the punt team. Was well, he a good player? You talk about beating the, the, the receiver to a point and knew the route that was coming. Watch Tabor work. He'll come in from the left side of your screen, and as the receiver's trying to come back, Tabor's coming back with him, and that's the second one that he actually should have picked off. Has already ha he already has one interception of the, in the game. Shops kicking him at 48 yards per kick. He's already faked one with a run. Not his best kick. See if it gets an FAU hop. It does. Well, that'll look great on the scorecard. 59 yarder as Shump. Let's take a look at playing with style. Brought to you by Belt. Florida's defense has been great all season. They averaged seven and a half tackles for loss a game. This was the game changer. It's just kind of been a game of big plays. Tabor makes. A big play here to rip it away and come up with his first interception of the ball game. That, that Jason Driscoll fumble was what really got things started. It was a neck and neck, toe to toe, heavyweight fight before that happened. Eight tackles behind the line of scrimmage, five sacks, a pick. This is left side for Jordan Scarlett. Gain of six. Nice looking young player. Aquinas has produced some running backs now. It's a great high school program. And you, know, you see kids in Division I football all around the country that have played there. You know that they played at one of the top programs in the entire country. On second and four play action. Harris Chase. Strip. Balls loose. Into the end zone. Covered by Florida Atlantic. Touchdown Owls. O.C. Rose found it. We got a game. There is a clock, Tom, in every quarterback's head. That it's taken too long. Get rid of the football. If I'm moving, somebody's chasing because I felt it. Something forced me to, to move. And that ball needed to come out earlier. Excellent play to bat it down. Fourth force fumble by Trey Hendrickson, the junior from Apopka. Extra point is good. We are tied at 14 with 8.03 to go. Oh boy. How about the play of Trey Hendrickson? And not just Trey Hendrickson. I beat this drum all game long. But Hendrickson, Bryant, Coley, Eugene, the entire front four of Florida Atlantic have been outstanding in this ball game today. He just happened to be the guy in this instance to make the play to tie the ball game up. Wow. They've been in this environment before. Charlie Partridge said, listen, last year we played in Nebraska and Alabama. Yeah. Our kids know their kids. There's not going to be an intimidation factor going to the swamp. No, I, and I did the game where Florida Atlantic played uh, Alabama last year. But there, there's no quit in this group. They are here, and I think they've proven it for 60 minutes. They're not going anywhere. And the way they're playing defensively, there is room for concern. Momentum's a funny thing. Can Florida regain it? Brandon Powell will take a knee. So Treon Harris and the Florida offense back on the field. 
210 yards of offense today. Time of possession has been their friend all season long. One of the best in the country in time of possession. Helps their defense rest, has helped those guys wreak havoc. And today, they're minus three minutes in time of possession to FAU. Let's check in with Laura. FAU defensive coordinator Rock Bellantoni had told his guys right before that fumble, he said, we have to get a takeaway. This is a one-score game. We have to make something happen. His owls responded, guys. He should buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> Lucky Saturday. Yeah, they faked the pitch. Harris flicks this one over the bench. Yeah, he wanted DeAndre Goolsby in the flat quick off the play fake and wanted to just get him the ball. There were a couple of Florida Atlantic defenders in the area that took it away and then all of a sudden he was faced with some pressure to have to throw it away. Nick and turn a cola spelling Hendrickson at that end position. Brought the pressure on him second down at 10. To the running game. Taylor turns his way past the 30. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Matt Schick. Tom, the, the Citadel brought the tin horn with them to Columbia. Tyler Renew all the way to the end zone. The Citadel outgaining South Carolina on the ground 337 to 70. They're up one. Wow. Messing around with that wishbone. It's tough to defend on a short week. Third down and four. Harris. Pocket collapses. He goes down again. Fifth sack of the game for Florida Atlantic. Big number 90. Shalom Obana laying on top of the quarterback. Obana from my neck of the woods, Kempner High School in Sugar Land, Texas. This is the first time that they've really dialed up some pressure they decide to bring five and they're able to get the tree on Harris and force another punt they're going to get some decent field position remember 71 trick plays for Florida Atlantic on film you got to figure they got something up their sleeve here late with a chance for a program defining win Stoshek takes a fair catch at the 36 yard line six minutes 32 seconds left Three Heisman Trophy winners have worn a Florida uniform. Spurrier in 66, threw for better than 2,000 yards. Danny Werfel in 96, 3,600 yards and 39 touchdowns. And Tebow in 2007, the first sophomore to win it. I'm Tebow, I want my statue throwing. And the other two guys got one, balls up, getting ready to come out. <laughs> He's running it. <laughs> we may welcome he threw another. for a few yards here. Yeah. We have, may have another Heisman win on our hands. Our audio technician, Ben Sims, welcome Bryce Logan Sims this week. Eight pounds, zero ounces, 20 Congratulations, inches. Ben, big time. Congratulations to he and his wife, Savannah. Greg Howell in the backfield. They've shown they can run it. Jacquez Johnson pressured. Howell got a key block. Johnson will go ahead and tuck it and with those tender ankles is able to find six yards a healthy Jacquez Johnson may have gone for 15 on that play. Well, what oh, a hearts. block. It, what a block by Howell. I mean peeling back saw his quarterback was in trouble and that allowed for the big gain there. Otherwise he may be bottled up or have to throw the ball away. Watch number nine. Just scanning things feels it and then peels back on Brian Cox. So it was a nice block to get Johnson to the outside of the formation. Excellent work. Second and four. Howell able to get a lean, and he's going to pick up a pair of leaf third and two. Florida Atlantic has never, in their brief history, beaten a top 25 team. And folks, it hadn't even been close. And they've had 15, and the game's decided by an average of 37 points. They've had a great deal of success running right between the tackles and short yardage. So if Howell's actually not in the game, he's no. the guy that's actually been able to do it. But 
Johnson's certainly capable. Trying to follow his fullback. He's got the first down. Cal L. Williams, the fullback, put in. The ball came loose. Florida's got it. Looks like Marcus May. Well, he clearly has the first down. There it is. And the ball's going to come out. It's out. No doubt about it. Hey, credit Nick Washington for pulling Johnson away from the loose ball, letting May fall on it. And Washington with a nice hit. Standing in there scrapping not only to wrap up to make sure he had the tackle but to punch the ball out and give Florida some pretty good field position here to start the drive. What a nice game though. A lot of ebbs and flows a lot of back and forth between these two teams. Third turnover for the Owls. Taylor got past the first guy stutter step again and a stiff arm will gain him five. Uh, credit LeBlanc there for it. Keeping le outside leverage again, and I can't stress how important that is. Once he bounces a run, if he gets outside of the last line of defense right there, you see him trying to get Taylor out of bounds because if he misses, Taylor turns up, and it's a foot race. But a nice job by this young man right here in Cravon Le LeBlanc. On second and five, back to Taylor. We'll see where they mark it. Right now, it's just short. I think they found something they like with Taylor running behind Mason Alter, the transfer from Fordham. He and Trip Thurman, who's the leader of the offensive line and kind of the glue up front, number 63. Big guy at 6'5, 313 pounds. It's an amazing story. Halter. Blocking at Fordham, part of the top 10 passing offense in the FCS. Yeah. And because they don't honor red shirts in that league unless you've been injured, and he wasn't ready to play at 250 pounds, he had another year to play. They shopped him around. He was going to go to Old Dominion. Wow. And instead of playing in front of 3,000 at Fordham, now he's playing in front of 90,000 <laughs> at Florida. And it's actually Tyler Jordan who stepped in at right guard. Who's, who's doing the work alongside Mason Halter? They are just short. And it's going to leave third and less than one. Rain starting to fall here at the swamp. Not an easy gimme when you have Coley and Bryant inside. 11 and 2 for Florida Atlantic. Two guys that have. Reestablish the line of scrimmage consistently throughout this ball game. They There's each big go Bryant. three bills. Yep. They load it up again. Taylor, the running back, got it to him, and he got it. I believe forward progress. First down, Florida. You know, that's a situation where I might actually load it up. And release a receiver. Well, you've got great tight ends yeah, to do one, it. One of those guys on the on the edge where it's showers, or because everybody's thinking run there. I would fake it in there to, and then a quick pass because at this point in the game you're going for it on fourth and an inch, and, and at this point on the field, so it's an opportunity to get a big strike. John Makovic thought the same thing against Nebraska back in the day, didn't he? He did. First and ten, Florida end around. This time they give it to Callaway. You know they've run that with out of that formation with Powell and Callaway numerous times, but they never gave it to him. At least today, that's only the third carry of the season for Callaway. She's Al Shair, the outside linebacker to that side, did a nice job as well. And it's all about when you play against speed, you can't allow it to get outside. And he fought through a block to turn Callaway back inside. That thing was getting ready to pop if he gets outside. But he turns it in where he's got some help. And it's just doing your responsibility defensively to, to allow everybody else to do theirs. I did mine. Now you guys show up and help me out. Charlie Partridge told Lord to half. It's an easy game, meaning it's simple. Taylor trying to find the edge. He doesn't. 
And he picks up just one. That's going to leave third down in the rain with three minutes to go. Trey Hendrickson in on the stop. And that's exactly why I keep harping on outside leverage because Florida has so many fast players. Callaway, Taylor, Scarlett, Cronkite. When they get the edge, it, it's over. I mean, at the snap of a finger, it's a foot race. It turns into an absolute track meet. And credit Florida Atlantic for keeping everything inside and allowing guys to pursue from inside out and make plays. Florida has been stuck in third and long all day. They've only converted a pair of them. Treon look in and complete. That'll bring up fourth down trying to find Brandon Powell. The longer this game goes and the longer it's tied the more confidence Florida Atlantic starts to play with. I mean now at, at this point in the game they feel like they can win it and it's going to it's going to take a special play to end this thing. But Towns here, in to punch it to Stoshek. Yeah, Stoshek's got to be smart. You can't fair catch one inside the 10 yard line here. Down by Florida at the three yard nice, line. Nice, nice work. 37 yarder. Chris Thompson's been a menace on special teams all season. He was able to race downfield and be in position to down this one from the player of the game for Florida thus far. Johnny Townsend, the sophomore from Orlando. We had a slow start to this one, a sleepy first quarter, and then finally. Play started to be made in the second half. Taven Bryan with a 47 yard fumble return to set up a score. Then Florida went over the top to Antonio Callaway for a touchdown. Gators look to be cruising. Florida Atlantic followed with one, then a strip and recovery in the end zone. We're tied at 14. Missed kicks for both sides, a total of three missed field goals. Florida Atlantic with their backs against the goal line, run it out of there for three from Greg Howe. Timeout taken by Florida here. With 2.09 to go. First charge time out of the half, Florida. So, Florida with this field position, thanks to Johnny Townsend, yeah. they can get it back seconds. in timeout. good field position as well. Calvin Taylor, 94 yards and a touchdown, his sixth straight game with a score. Treon Harris, 50% completions, a touchdown, but also a fumble that led to a score. And Jacquez Johnson has thrown for a touchdown and thrown a pick for Florida Atlantic. This is when, if you're Jim McElwain, you're over with your arm around Austin Harden and telling him you can win this football game. You, you got to massage his shoulders a little bit, love him up a little bit, trying to get his confidence back because you may have an opportunity here if Florida Atlantic punts it, they're going to have some excellent field position. They don't allow a first down here, it's Florida's advantage. Harden hit a game winner against Vandy just a couple of weeks ago. Second down seven. Brick wall, gain of two. Timeout, Florida. Second Keanu Neal with the, the stop. Florida. There will be a 30 second timeout. So 2.05 to go. And now all of a sudden you have this kicking situation that has reared its head again today. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It's been a sticky situation for him all season. <laughs> and now you got to try to help your kicker out and get him in a position of confidence because it's not like he's missed long ones today, 33 and 34. Yeah, it's about that's what coaching's about. I mean, it's building confidence in kids, trying to get something out of them that they at that point in time don't think they have. And so I think he's over taking, you know, taking a little time with the kicker. Look, we're going to need you. And he may have started it after the last field goal attempt and the last miss is so close we're going to need you at some point in this ball game. Florida has put this game in the hands of their defense and it is a great defense one of the best in the country. The special teams may be featured here soon. FAU with two timeouts left. Gators with one. Jay Warren is in the backfield next to Jacquez Johnson. They go play action. Looking deep. Let's it go. Wide open overthrown. Oh, he had what he wanted. He had Stosak up the sideline, wide open, 
would have been more than enough for the first down and one on one in coverage. We'll see here Stosak with a double move gave it to Tabor and then took it away and was open. Marcus May coming over the top but it would have been a little bit too late. It would have been a first down and the drive would have continued instead. They're going to give the ball away here to Florida with some excellent field position even without a return. Dalton Shop, a great punter for Florida Atlantic. Pressure on him here. Callaway won't have a chance for a return. It takes a Florida bounce, and they'll have sensational field position. He was trying to give time to his coverage team. He did, but it cost him some yardage. Just 34 yards on the punt from Shop. And now Florida's offense tasked with covering those yards. They need 41 of them for a score. 150 to go. Really the difference in this ball game. Miss kicks to Austin Harden. Things one off the left upright. There's another one that slides right on him. And there's Jim McElwain working his magic because he knows at some point he's going to have to rely on Austin Harden again to maybe win this ball game. To Taylor. Picks up two. Here's the thing about Austin Harden and his game winner against Vanderbilt. He was in nearly the exact same situation. He hit the game winner from 43 yards out after missing his previous three attempts in the same game. I mean, that's like striping it 310 down the middle on 18 after you just bogey three in a row. <laughs> it's tough, though. It's tough to get out of that funk. Harris trying to throw. Pressured. Stutters. Flicks it. Past the line of scrimmage, Hunter Snyder was the man chasing, and he bought himself another down. How about young Snyder again? I mean, he has played one whale of a ball game. Came in here with three and a half sacks, but he has one today. Put some pressure on Harris again, and Harris, a more fleet of foot guy in the open field, but Snyder was, foot, you know, just basically move for move with it. It would be a 57 yard attempt from here for Austin Harden. His long on the season is 43. He hit a 52 yarder last year. Third and nine. Play clock at one. Harris. Everybody covered. And he threw it incomplete. Well, it took a shot in the process along his own sideline. From Trey Hendrickson. They only rush three, but they, once it takes a while, Hendrickson comes up and it forces Harris to get rid of the football, and they're going to have to punt it away. I think one of the reasons they're considering this the bad field goal kicking all season, but also the field condition, especially where they would be spotting it. It's soggy, it's wet, it's been chewed up all day. What a ball game. What a game. We got a minute to go. Stoshak asked for a fair catch. He takes it there. It's been the downfall for Florida Atlantic. Really poor all field game. position all game long. So 62 seconds left. You have two timeouts. You have a quarterback that's a senior leader and a record holder, but he's been limited due to his injuries. He hasn't shown the ability to go downfield much today, although they had the double move with Stoshak last possession. What do you do here on first down? I go to Greg Howell in at this end of the field and they've had some they've had a little bit of success through the tackles. They have two timeouts. Let's see if we can pop one. Let's spread them out and maybe run the draw underneath to kickstart a drive. But you don't want to make a mistake on this end of the field and give Florida the football game. They're going to take it into overtime right here. Florida Atlantic has exactly one win against a power five team in their entire history. That was September 15th of 2007 when they knocked off Minnesota. Third and final timeout of the half. Florida. Florida stops the clock. Florida Atlantic has never beaten a ranked team. And it's been since 1988 that a ranked Florida team lost a home game to a, a non-conference unranked opponent. I got to believe Charlie Partridge if he had better field position he'd be more aggressive in this situation with just 59 or 109 on the clock and two timeouts but when you have the ball 
backed up at you know inside your own 10 yard line. Something bad can happen and you don't want to lose a football game that way. Let's also consider this. They have all these trick book trick plays in their back pocket, mm -hmm. right? They've proven though that they don't need them against Florida. They've gone toe to toe. No doubt about man it. Man to man. Yep. They ran the fake pump but never got a first down after that on that play. Now maybe we'll see one of those or multiple of those when they're working on a short field in overtime. I mean they had one <laughs> just a, the uh, pump and go with Stosak down the sideline. I would throw that into a you know the bag of tricks or, or as a trick play when you when you uh, run the stutter and go it was there for the taking. So the clock will run out and we'll hit overtime tied at 14 between Florida Atlantic and Florida. How about this five fingers up instead of four. <laughs> I and the like confidence it. I like the it. That is the end of the fourth quarter. Four times in the fourth quarter, Florida had the ball in Florida Atlantic territory. They got zero points out of it. The Florida Atlantic defense deserves all the kudos in the world for the job they've done today. And in the passing game, as we've mentioned over and over, they haven't done a lot of blitzing. It's been pretty much just the front four that has harassed Treon Harris throughout most of this ball game. So now we set up for overtime. Welcome those of you who watched the Citadel upset South Carolina. The last time two SEC teams lost to non-power five opponents on the same day. Go back to September of 2011. Ole Miss lost to Bronco Mendenhall and BYU. And Georgia dropped its opener in the Dome against Boise State. This would be much, much bigger. Florida Atlantic's never beaten a top 25 team. The, the name of the game today has been defense put it quite simply Taven Bryan had a 47 yard fumble return that set up a Calvin Taylor touchdown plunge and then Antonio Callaway with that long pass from Treon Harris Florida Atlantic answered eventually a touchdown pass and then this strip and recovery for Florida Atlantic to tie it at 14. O.C. Rose had that recovery in the end zone Jim McElwain preaches to his guys we don't look forward we come every day to see how can we get better today he insisted our guys aren't prepared or trained to take games for granted but it seems like that's what happened today and this neutered Florida offense has gotten nowhere yeah and you see why coach Saban earlier in the week you know yes. went on a rant about playing FCS teams and really not calling it an off week you wind up in, in uh, games like the Citadel in South Carolina and now all of a sudden uh, here's Florida Atlantic in overtime against uh, against a solid Florida team and they have gone toe to toe with them for 60 now plus minutes. Charlie Partridge before he took the job at Florida Atlantic was on Brett Bielema's staff at Arkansas prior to that Wisconsin before that Pittsburgh. He talked about Jim McElwain's comment that these guys meaning the Owls want to be Gators. I said coach you've been in that position before you know where he's coming from. Right. Atlantic You've coached in those scenarios. Won the toss and has elected to go on defense for the first overtime they said, yeah. period. But I didn't have to say anything to my guys. To be played in this end zone. They saw it themselves. They knew. And it looks today like whether that was intended bullets and board material or not. That motivation has paid off. And now that momentum has paid off for this Florida Atlantic team. Yeah, they came in. They were prepared. They have played well. They've dug deep. And they've been in this game the entire time. When they went down 14 nothing, they didn't flinch. I mean, they stayed the course, able to get themselves in the end zone one play at a time. A couple of stops on defense. Big play defensively by Hendrickson to strip sack Treon Harris. They recovered in the end zone. Now it's all of a sudden we're tied at 14 apiece. They didn't flinch, and they have been 
toe to toe in the middle of the ring, slamming it out, slugging it out with Florida. You said before the game, this Florida team's kind of ahead of schedule, right? Where they are, winning the East. Yeah. We might be seeing glimpses of who they are. Empty backfield for Treon Harris takes off on a draw. They had it scouted, but couldn't bring him down. And Harris is able to rip off a nine yard run on first down. Missed tackle. Second and short now. Yeah, it felt like this was here earlier in the game. You see a four man front, four one front, and it's screaming for quarterback draw. Nice play call there by Doug Nussmeyer, the offensive coordinator for Florida, to recognize it. Basically, formation Florida Atlantic into what he wanted, and then Treon Harris executing very well. Man coverage on the outside with Robinson. Here's Kelvin Taylor. And Taylor gains three. Keep in mind, when Florida Atlantic holds and forces a Florida field goal attempt, they have not been gimmies. No. Had the ball down here several times and have come away empty on two occasions. A miss from 34 and a miss from 33. First possession of overtime. They fake the toss. Harris looking for his tight end. Jake McGee's got it. And he breaks free. Touchdown, Florida. A nice play call by Nussmeyer. Going to fake the toss and sneak the tight end. Watch the tight end kind of under here and come all the way across the formation. They have players in position to make the play. Al Shair is there to make the play. They don't tackle big Jake McGee in the open field. He gets in the end zone. Harden has missed two extra points this season. That's blocked. Florida Atlantic will fall on it. Oh, 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 oh boy. The window is open. Oh boy. Two missed field goals and a blocked extra point. Well, here's where Jim McElwain's outstanding defense has to rise up. Came in first in points allowed at 14.5. And is Big Hendrickson again making a play. 6'4", 265 pound junior Trey Hendrickson gets his hands on the ball. Remember at the half what Charlie Partridge said to Laura Rutledge said it may come down to a field goal. Yeah it may come down to the kicking game indeed. Yeah it may come down an extra point. Marcus Clark is a tailback swamp getting loud. Stoshak has it inside the 20. It's a gain just more than five. Yeah, ball security. You see him once he got in a crowded area, both hands on the football, securing it so it doesn't get stripped out of there and give Florida a cheap turnover. Sky is opening up. Heaviest rainfall of the day. Second and five. Blitz coming. Clark straight ahead. A yard and a half short of the first down. They run Clark inside at 5'8", 185 pounds. It's been Howell, the bigger back at 6'1", 205. That's done the damage between the tackles for the Owls. So. They bring the fullback, Kellel Williams, in. Remember, this is where they ran the quarterback sneak, and Johnson fumbled it late in the fourth quarter. And you may revisit that if not. Uh, I like that call. I like the quarterback quarterback sneak here. Johnson gets a blocker, spins for the first down, carries it inside the 10. First and goal for Florida Atlantic. A rumble of eight for big Jacques Johnson. You don't think he wanted to make up for that fumble? 
and, a, and a, another short yardage opportunity to to really come through for his team both hands on the football churning twisting trying to will his football team to a win here a graduated senior may come down to an extra point Greg Joseph gets loose in the rain. Timeout. Partridge ran all the way on the field to get it. Prior to the snap, Florida Atlantic takes its charge timeout of the first overtime period. It will be a 30 second timeout. Charlie Partridge ran 40 yards on the field to get the officials' attention on this first and goal. Oh, what a ball game this has been. Can't say it enough. You just, you know, you, you appreciate good football. Two well-coached football teams. And Florida Atlantic got off the bus today and decided, hey, we're going to win a football game. We've come to win. This is, and they played like it. It's not just a young team, but it's also not the same team that went to two bowls under Howard Schnellenberger. They're right. only two and eight on the season. It's a complete rebuild, loaded with freshmen. Would be the biggest win in school history. They need a touchdown and an extra point. Out of the timeout, first and goal. Warren is the tailback. Johnson pressured. It was blown up from the get-go by C.C. Jefferson. Loss what? of two. Jefferson, watch 96. Come right into your screen. Right there, you see him and. He takes the, the dive, man. Now it's, I'm going to leave everybody else on the quarterback. That's my responsibility in the option. I'm taking the dive, took it away, and almost made the play on the dive, man, and the quarterback. Look at the rain coming down. A soaker, empty backfield for Quez Johnson. Johnson lets it go incomplete no flag he was trying to go to Stoshak who hit the turf in the end zone. Well, Stoshak working against Quincy Wilson at the top and Wilson's got him by the shoulder pads the entire time. He's, he's you know that's how you stay in pretty good position you just hold on. I don't know how the official missed it. I mean he's just riding him down the field. Holding the shoulder pad. Third and goal. Play clock already at 10. With a lot of room in the corner of the end zone right here. End zone. Juggle. Incomplete. Nate Terry, the intended receiver. It leaves fourth and goal. Trying to go to the inside slot. Poole never really turns around to make a play on the football. Terry's trying to fight through him to, to make the catch. Officials letting him play. They need it all here. Fourth and goal. Down a score. It's coming. Johnson fires. Incomplete. Florida survives. This young Florida Atlantic program gave it all they had today. Coming in, Florida had a 98% chance to win this game. They were favored by nearly 40 points. Well, Brian Poole makes the game winning play at the end of it. And they're celebrating, but uh, also breathing a sigh of relief. 
For more on that, Laura Rutledge is standing by with Jim McElwain. Thanks, Coach. In overtime and after the blocked field goal, you knew, or the blocked extra point, excuse me, you knew that you would need a strong defensive stand. You got it from your team. What can you say to describe the final moments of this one? Well, first and foremost, they they took it to us, and and uh, we got to get a lot better. We got to we got a week to get better to get to our next ball game. But let's not take anything away from them. They they took it to us. They probably deserve to win. Here's the great thing. Our guys are figuring out a way to win and that's really important. Treon Harris in this offense as you said continues to figure out a way to win but how do you get better offensively in this week. Well I think a lot of it has to do we got to look in the mirror you know um, quit looking around and, and uh, you know at the same time I think we have 10 wins don't we. <laughs> Swamp was pretty electric. It's a great place to play and we might have sold some extra popcorn. <laughs> you might have coach what do you take away from a game like this you told us that every Saturday is different you never know what you can expect and what really sticks out to you when you'll look back on this one well I think when we uh, kind of look back on it we'll we'll get it studied and we'll put it to bed but I think the biggest thing is you know what believe in each other that, that, that's the key believe in each other and just go win this down and our defense did a great job of that at the end all right I'll let you go dry off thanks he told us yesterday the first words out of his mouth we still have so far to go. It was evident today. They've got Florida State next and then the SEC championship game. And now for today's player of the game brought to you by the U.S. Navy. Florida quarterback Treon Harris. He wins again somehow some way with this fantastic defense. Treon Harris and the Florida Gators find a way to find a victory. Game winning 13 yard touchdown pass to his sixth year senior on a play action play Jake McGee. And the final play for Florida Atlantic facing fourth and goal. They had a shot. Here you see Johnson going to be forced to step up, trying to find Stostak in the back of the end zone. And Brian Poole, two consecutive plays in a row, came up big for the Florida Gators. Heartbreak for the visitors who were looking for their first ever win against a top 25 team. Oh, so close. On the other side, Florida finds another escape. And I think it's more of relief than it is breathing a sigh of relief than it is celebration because they knew they were in a tough football game today. Treyon Harris, the sophomore from Miami, stepping up big after being pressured time and time again by Florida Atlantic's front four. They decide to go play action to Jake McGee. Well, they sneak McGee underneath all the way across the formation. Florida Atlantic actually had players in position to make the play. They just failed to make a tackle in the open field. And, and that play they'd made all game long is just in that situation when it's when it's big, when it really matters, when the game's on the line. You know they didn't make the play Florida did McGee found himself into the in the end zone Jim McElwain seems to see this season in this program in a glass half full scenario and they'll need that confidence going into a rivalry game against Florida State and then to Atlanta against what will likely be Alabama opponent still to be decided. One thing's for certain everybody got their money's worth today an overtime win for Florida. He's the first ever first year head coach at Florida to find 10 wins in his first season. He may coach 15 games this year. Coming up, SEC now, our final score in overtime Florida 20, Florida Atlantic 14. A heart stopping affair in a soaked swamp, and the Gators survive. Now, let's take you to the studio where Matt.